Imagine one night you woke up and suddenly hear a siren a loud alarm someone has released a bio weapon killing all the microbes even from within your body Hello I am Ankita and I am Nisha and we welcome you to another episode of Sinverse your very own synthetic universe podcast and today as promised we shall first address the question asked by Manish and Utkarsh in the last episode which is what would happen in the world if all the microbes disappear how bad can it be no diseases no sick days less infestations but would we die no not immediately no uh, on a less fatal note we will be having digestive issues we would require vitamin supplements because bacteria in the gut help in digestion and provide necessary vitamins but animals like cows and other ruminant animals survive on these microbes yes their gut microbes are essential for plant digestion without microbes all the cows goat and sheep would starve and die well no milk products or meat I guess we all go vegan. Now you will be thinking a little less meat and some soya bean what be doing great damage right Are you sure that we'll be getting the plant food too The plants require nitrogen fixed by microbes for their growth along with the other nutrients decomposed by these microbes Eventually the soil will give up on its nutrients and the plants will die too Even humans can't manufacture so much fertilizers There starts a whole lot of problems with no plants more global warming less oxygen more carbon dioxide we will slowly suffocate oxygen will become the new currency food will be scarce we will be living on nutrient supplements eventually we will lose out many will die but even after death their bodies including heaps of human organic waste will not decompose earth will become a dump yard that is if we don't die instantly if some of our proposed microbial derived organelles like mitochondria are not also removed with the blast this would mean an instant death for all earth will become a graveyard radioactive waste and nuclear plants will leak radioactivity and leach out to the oceans killing whatever is left there a horrifying future isn't it so we definitely reach a conclusion that microbes are important for us but we could do well without a few pathogenic ones right yep those are the ones who can bleed you inside out can make open sores on your body the ones that can kill your lungs and okay yeah 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 yep those ones right we have antimicrobials right most commonly called antibiotics yeah something that we have every once in a while in normal fevers flu for a cough and even sometimes when we cut ourselves There are many antibiotics we know of as of now but we use them only if we have any sort of infection which is only once every 3 months at the max That's true but not only once in 3 months but do you know that the majority of farms use antibiotics in their poultry and other animal products for better production Yes there is an abundance of antibiotic molecules in the milk you drink eggs chicken and fish you eat That means we are artificially increasing the process of evolution for these bacteria. Yes, we are. We are ushering an age of superbugs when all of our famous antibiotics like amoxicillin, doxycycline, cefalexin, azithromycin, sulfamethoxazole, and trimethoprim will become redundant. Yeah, that's true. By the way, do you remember the story of penicillin? Now that is an interesting story. Maybe we can start with once upon a time. and go a little behind in the history of antibiotics and then only we can understand their uncanny ability to not to die well as we know penicillin is one of the earliest discovered and most widely used antibiotic agents exactly and its discovery was not even planned it was 1928 when sir alexander fleming was working at st mary's hospital in london as a bacteriologist and when he observed a plate culture of staphylococcus that had been contaminated by a blue green mold yeah and it was an interesting observation for fleming to make the bacterium staphylococcus aureus was being killed by the presence of the mold penicillin notatum which is in principle at least proved the existence of an antibacterial agent that substance was named penicillin by fleming which later gained its therapeutic value and people started mass production of penicillin and used it as an antibiotic widespreadly 
and that's how the first use of antibiotics started in the first place. All was well and good until one day when the bacteria decided to go resistance against these antibiotics. Something that we call antibiotic resistance, a phenomenon in which bacteria fight back and find new ways to survive using their defense strategies called resistance mechanisms. Antibiotic resistance is becoming a major threat to the modern medicine, making even the most curable diseases of 20th century to be fatal in the 21st century. The incidence of resistance was first recorded in the streptococci and gonococci species of bacteria, and this resistance became a major issue to antibiotic use for the first time with the treatment of tuberculosis. But this was only the start. And it still continues to remain a major public health threat, contributing to the antimicrobial resistance worldwide. Don't we have a far greater problem in our hands, the pandemic? Why are we bothering with antibacterial resistance? Yes, true. Soon we will be out of it too. But this pandemic will leave behind its ugly traces. Despite the fact that antibiotics do not treat or prevent viral infections like COVID-19, the results of behavioral insight research conducted in nine countries and areas of the European region showed antibiotic use increasing throughout the pandemic along with the cases. Of those taking the antibiotics, 79 to 96% reported not having been infected with COVID-19, but were taking antibiotics inappropriately, believing that they would prevent infection. Evidences indicate that up to 15% of severely affected COVID-19 patients develop bacterial co-infection and could need antibiotics, whereas 75% actually receive them. So what do you mean that we might survive this pandemic but we have created much more resistant bacteria, a fact that can usher in another new pandemic? Antibiotic resistance makes it more challenging and expensive to treat infections. Resistant infections require testing to determine what drugs are suitable for treating the infection. When the first choice of antibiotics are ineffective, more expensive drugs or a longer treatment regimen may be required. Additionally, microbes resistant to one antibiotic may also be resistant to others, a phenomenon often known as the multi-drug resistance that further increases the challenges in treating the resistant infections. Yeah, true. But not everything is bad. There is also some good news for the society. The pandemic offers some procedures that can reduce the spread of antibiotic resistance, like adoption of transdisciplinary and international approaches such as the One Health approach, which recognizes that human health is connected to a broad range of global economic and environmental factors that must be considered when addressing public health concerns or, most importantly, increase in general hygiene, which reduces the chance of one's infection and the potential to spread the causative microbes. That is true. Most have a habit of mask and sanitizer, something which was impossible in the pre-pandemic era. Can we fight this, the antibacterial resistance? Yes, the five golden rules. Reduce antibiotic use in human medicine, improve animal antibiotic use, fix the broken antibiotic market and better diagnostics, ensure adequate funding for stewardship and innovation, continue international focus. Correctly said. But you are forgetting the most important point, which is self-awareness and don't take antibiotics unless you are certain you need them. Finish your pills and get vaccinated. Yep, easy right? And good news that the researchers have been trying hard to reverse this antibiotic resistance. Some bacteria produce hydrogen sulfide. This endogenous hydrogen sulfide helps microbes to gain antibiotic resistance. And some researchers observed an exciting phenomenon. When they added hydrogen sulfide to species which do not produce it, they lose their resistance. In fact, it improves sensitivity to antibiotics and even reverse antibiotic resistance in bacteria that do not naturally produce the agent. Any other much more molecular techniques used to correct this problem at a very basic level, but that can be your story for next time. Well, no matter how many times the microbes grow resistant to our synthesized antibiotics, we are gonna find a way or another to overcome them. All we have to keep in mind is not to make some super pathogen having resistance 
to all the antibiotics. Until then, we are safe. Have you wondered what will happen if all the bacteria become antibiotic resistant? If you find the answer, do let us know through our social media handles. Or else, stay tuned to our next episode.